All right, guys, we're back for another episode of UFC Main Event Challenge. And we have won our last week's main event, picking Tetsuro Tyra, beating Alex Perez. And now going into Robert the Reaper Whitaker versus Ikram Alaskarov. Uh, kind of a short notice replacement for Hamza Chamaev, I believe, like a week and a half, maybe two weeks. So let's get into it and talk about who we think is going to win. So we'll start off with Robert the Weeper, the Reaper Whitaker. The the Weeper would actually be kind of a cool nickname too. Anyway, so he fights to the top of the middleweight rankings, basically beats you over Romero to get the title, and then he fights Israel Adesanya. Izzy beats him up. He knocks him out in round number two after kind of beating him up bad in round one. Then he beats Darren Till. And this is during the pandemic when I started watching. Then he beats Jared Cannonier, notably breaking Jared Cannonier's arm in, I believe, like the first round with a head kick that Cannonier blocked badly. Then he just styles on Kelvin Gastelum, earns himself a title shot against Adesanya again. Pretty close fight. You can argue it's a split decision. It's basically like as close as if I can go. He looks good against Izzy. Then he fights Marvin Vittori, uh, just kind of beats the hell out of him. Gets knocked out by Drickus Duplessis. I know it says a power jab. It was really just a jab that Drickus threw, and Whitaker was kind of moving into it, so that doubled the impact of the jab. And then just styling on Paulo Costa. So all in all, a pretty great fighter has only lost two champions, pretty much, um, in the last ten years. So he's only lost to two guys in the last ten years. That's Israel Adesanya and who is one of the best middleweights to ever do it, and Rick is Duplessis, who is the current champion. So no shame in his record. Let's talk about Ikram Eliskerov. So Ikram came into the UFC. So he fought in Eagle FC, actually, Habib's organization. That's kind of funny. Uh, then he, So he goes in t- from Eagle FC, two contender series, Kimura's Mario Sosa in round one. I didn't even watch that fight. Then he fights Phil Haas. It's kind of a back-and-forth fight. Uh, he lands a, just a really clean 1-2 on him in round one, knocking him out. Then he fights Worley Alves, drops Worley with a jab, so that's notable because Whitaker has been dropped with jabs before. And then he knocks him out. He's kind of stunned there, standing there against the cage, throws a flying knee, knocks him down with that, and then just kind of melts him. Actually, the knockout of Worley Alves was kind of reminiscent to the knockout that Jerkis Duplessis got on Robert Whitaker. Let's just quick go over their stats. Um, Al- Aliskarov is 31 years old. He is six foot zero, so 183 centimeters, 193 centimeters reach, and he is 15, one and zero. And that one loss was to Hamza Chemaev on the regional scene where he got knocked out. So, yeah, he is 183, 193. Let's take a look at Whitaker's stats. So he's 182, 187. So one centimeter less in height and six centimeters less in reach. So Elskarov does have a pretty long reach. And he is 25, 7, and 0, 33. So only two years older than Elskarov, but way more experience. Let's just take a look at Elskarov's regional scene. I usually don't put too much stock in their regional wins because when guys make it to the UFC, usually on the regional scene, they can kind of win however they feel like it. But let's just take a look. So this just says win, armbar, decision, guillotine choke, knockout, decision, ground and pound, knockout. And then he got the Kimura, another Kimura, another Kimura. So he has three Kimuras. So at one point he had three Kimuras out of four fights. So I don't think he's going to get Robert Whitaker with a Kimura, but that would be hilarious. But he has a pretty wide array of types of wins, like a good spread of knockouts, decisions, and submissions. And then obviously he has two first round knockouts in the UFC. So that's why they're fast tracking him. This does remind me of Abu Smagomedov, who fought Sean Strickland, just how a Russian guy comes into the UFC, gets a 
really impressive show-stopping first-round knockout against an unranked fighter in the UFC, and then they fast-track him to a ranked fight. And I think it's going to go a similar way. I don't think Ikram Alaskarov is going to crash and burn as badly as Abus did against Sean Strickland, but I just don't think that Ikram really has the striking skills necessary to hang with a guy like Whitaker or to really impact him. So let's do a little bit of tape study since I did take the time to break down this fight because I do love watching Robert Whitaker fight. So let's start off with Ikram Alaskarov. If this will ever load for us. Uh, so here, I just included Whitaker getting late kicked by Adesanya. Okay, so here we have Ikram. And the first thing I noticed about what his striking is that he fights really long in terms of just using his jab. He doesn't really like fight low and get down to the ground. But you can see that he has a really good jab. If this is going to work for me. So yeah, in this scenario, he pulls away from Morley Alves. And he's kind of just using this arm as like a fencing pose to try to stay defensive. So we can expect to see that against Robert Whitaker. But uh, we know that Robert Whitaker has great entrances. That's kind of like his main game. I also noticed that Alaskarov didn't really move his feet that much, and as a result, he is susceptible to getting leg kicked, and Robert Whitaker actually has really good leg kicks. And you can see just how flat-footed he is trying to land punches here. He's at a horrible angle to land on his opponent, like he's literally facing away from him, and he's still throwing. In this situation, again, you just have this jousting defensive posture as he's backing up away from his opponent. And let's see here. So he goes for a jab, two. And you can see how he's just like, his angle is so wrong on his opponent. I mean, good fighters, the best fighters in the world will get off angle but they don't kind of like back step wheeling away from their opponent after they throw a combination they just take kind of almost micro steps to readjust their angle and this is after he had warley alvis hurt and he just throws the flying knee it's great switch flying knee again this is probably only going to work against someone that you have rocked this little section that i have here is just Alaskarov throwing front kicks. So another one of his favorite weapons that he likes to do is throwing these teep kicks up the middle. Uh, I can see that being effective against Robert, but again, Robert Whitaker has made it kind of a staple of his career to avoid and counter these straightforward attacks that are just coming straight down the middle. And then a push kick against Phil Hawes, his other opponent. And then this section is just his jab. He actually has a really nice jab, as I said, dropping Worley Alves with it. But again, Robert Whitaker has faced arguably the best jabber in the world, Izzy Israel Adesanya, twice. And as a result, he has very good jab defense, but we'll talk about that later. And in this situation, Alaskar just is dropping Alves with a great jab. Um... Yeah, this is how Robert Whitaker has been dropped before, but we'll see. Just really solid jab from Alaskarov, good fundamentals, jab to the body here. And you can see his main defense, because this is how he attacks too, is sticking his left hand out and his right hand is up high guarding his head. So when he's whether he's retreating He's retreating like this, whether he's attacking, he's attacking like this. This is his main game plan. Something that I can see Robert Whitaker doing is just throwing his high kick right up here and catching Alaskarov clean on the face. So Alaskarov is from Russia. I don't know if he's Dagestani, but you know, as being from Russia, you'd expect him to have good wrestling, and he does. He was like the only person that was able to survive Hamza Chamayev's 
onslaught when Hamzat was on the regional scene. Elskarov, weak to leg kicks. Again, he doesn't move his feet that much, and so these leg kicks are landing clean and having a big impact on him. Just completely breaking his stance, stopping any combination that he might be doing. But about his wrestling, we haven't really seen him use aggressive wrestling in the UFC. I'm sure if you maybe on the Contender Series he used it since he did get the submission, but so far in the UFC he hasn't deemed it necessary. So it'll be interesting to see if he feels like he's getting the worst of the Whitaker fight on the feet if he'll go for grappling. So this is an interesting little attack that Phil Hawes was figuring out on Alaskarov. So again, Alaskarov likes to fight very long. He outstretches his arms and Phil Hawes just ducks kind of on the inside of it, but then throws his overhand right on the outside of it. And it lands pretty cleanly on Alaskarov. And that's a strike that Phil Hawes was going back to over and over again in their fight before he just got knocked out. You can see again, he just goes over the top of Alaskarov and he actually clips him on the chin there. So pretty impressive. I think that's something that Robert Whitaker can pick up on. Robert Whitaker doesn't really throw his right hook too much, but his left hook definitely, and he might, you know, switch it up in this fight. So yeah, again, posts with his left hand, but because his footwork isn't that great, he's kind of stationary and his chin is there for that overhand right from Phil Hawes. And as good as his as good as Alaskarov's jab is, his right hand is also probably just as good. He's a little bit more reticent to throw that. He's more stingy with it, but when he does throw it, it's nice, and he usually throws it behind the jab. So he sets up his distance and targeting with the jab, connecting cleanly on Phil Haas there, and then brings the right hand down right behind the ear afterwards, and that rocks Phil Haas. Follows it up with another jab, which is great to see. Still fighting in combinations, but he just doesn't have the fluidity that elite fighters like Robert Whitaker have when he's throwing these combinations. If we want to take a look at his feet really quick, so doesn't even have a good footing with his right foot. It's literally on the side as he's dragging it behind him. Then he steps up and, yeah, immediately off balance, retreating as Phil Huss throws a counter shot. And then again, another clean one-two, which this time actually knocks out Phil Hawes. So he's knocked out Worley Alves with a jab, knocked out Phil Hawes with a jab cross. Beautiful knockout. Let's just take a look at it from a different angle. Jab and then the cross just connects clean. And that is going to be something that Robert Whitaker has to watch out for because as good as he is at avoiding these straight strikes, he does kind of fight with his hands down, and he's going to need to be really on point to avoid those straight strikes. So Robert Whitaker kind of just takes the, he kind of takes a while to gauge the rhythm of his opponents. But once he has that rhythm down, he's pretty good at avoiding their strikes. So this is just a little bit of Adesanya kicking Robert's legs. I don't think this is going to be too big of a deal because Robert Whitaker does get leg kicked. He's not the best at checking or avoiding leg kicks, but he is good at punishing them. So he'll jab his opponents when they throw leg kicks and he'll just kind of pull his leg away sometimes. And most of the time his opponents kind of just start to forget to leg kick him. Kind of the juice isn't worth the squeeze when in terms of leg kicking Robert Whitaker. And also, Ikram hasn't really shown a propensity to kick his opponent's legs, and Adesanya is one of the best leg kickers in the entire sport. So I don't think this is going to be too indicative of what we're going to see in the Alaskara fight. Uh, just some head kicks. We can see a little bit of Robert Whitaker's defense here. So he does a bit more of the Philly shell style, kind of reminiscent of Dustin Poirier, where he will bend his elbow up to protect his right side and then will try to parry kicks with his left hand rather than just sticking it out there in like a fencing pose as he's retreating. Uh, this is also going to be useful for blocking body kicks because we do know that Alice Gareth throws a lot of these push kicks. So we'll see that Whitaker is going to be moving away from the body kicks 
and also down blocking, swiping them away from him before they can really make too much of a contact on him. Again, just head kicks. I don't think that Whitaker is going to be head kicked too much in this fight. Eliskarov, you know, he has shown a, that he will throw kicks, but not too many body kicks or spinning head kicks or anything like that. And uh, just a bit of Robert Whitaker's defense here. So you can see Dracus Duplessis throws a jab, and you can just see Robert Whitaker on his horse bouncing and then bouncing away from the jab. And this follow-up left hook from Duplessis, Whitaker avoids. And again, always covering up that right side. And just Robert Whitaker throwing a front kick of his own. And then following it up with a jab. So just always changing the rhythm on his opponents. And that jab missed, but Whitaker stays pretty defensively sound in the pocket and then he'll throw the follow-up right hand and then back away from it and if we just take a look at the difference in angles of his foot position he's actually facing his opponent whereas Alaskarov is completely i don't know where it was but he was just completely off angle And like off balance as he's retreating. And now this is the portion that I think is the most relevant to the fight. Where we get Whitaker just stepping in, throwing jabs to counter his opponent's movements. So in this situation, Jerichus is going to throw a kick. Whitaker is just a step ahead of him. Throws a jab, connects clean through the guard. Another jab countering Adesanya's uppercut that Adesanya is trying to throw which Whitaker connects with and even if these jabs aren't doing too much of a too much damage on his opponents they are stopping their forward attack momentum so I'll just let these kind of start playing but basically here it's just Whitaker is countering his opponents jabs with attacks of his own uh, he throws the left hook a lot which is going to get over his opponents guard I know that Eliskarov does guard up with his right hand while he's posting with his left hand so maybe the right hook would be better to get through as we saw Phil Haas do but I think that he can still land with his left hook and again an overhand right or a right hook there countering Costa's left hand jab and then just really good at countering jabs in this position throws an uppercut and then another left hook so just really clean from Whitaker there again just kind of baiting out strikes from his opponent so he can counter them just good jab let's just talk about Whitaker's downsides so we okay first we do have a leg kick compilation from Whitaker which is pretty solid this is going to be a big weapon in his fight against Alaskarov because again Alaskarov isn't the best at moving his feet a whole lot and he's not the best at actually defending leg kicks so Whitaker's leg kicks are pretty nice in this position we have Whitaker getting dropped so let's just take a close look at the strikes that are actually dropping Whitaker here so in round one against his against Adesanya in the rematch Adesanya steps in he is in the southpaw stance with his right leg forward and he throws a left straight so not too much power behind it but it gets right between Whitaker's guard catching him on the chin and it does drop him will Askarov be able to throw that possibly but I think one thing that really was messing with Whitaker here was the fact that Adesanya was switching stances so much, as much as we've seen of Alaskarov, we haven't really seen him switching stances in the striking. And he is really kind of just that orthodox stance fighter throwing the jab, cross, jab, jab, cross. So I think that a lot of the punches that Alaskarov is going to be throwing are strikes that Whitaker is going to be expecting. So here's just a replay of that. Left hand right through the guard, clipping him on the chin, dropping him. 
So this is a big weakness of Whitaker. I'd say he has a below average chin at the top of the middleweight division. Here we have a southpaw stance again. This seems to be Robert Whitaker's weakness, and we can talk about why that is. But southpaw stance again, and Drickus just extends his right hand, which is now his jab hand, as Whitaker's trying to attack him. So again, Drickus was switching stances a lot, and I think that's what is causing Robert Whitaker issues because he is really good when he gets a pace and a read on his opponent, but when his opponent can break up that read by switching stances and suddenly their backhand is now their lead hand that's jabbing, that can really cause Robert problems. And I think that stems from the fact that so many of Robert Whitaker's attacks comes from slipping his opponent's attacks and countering them. So he waits for his opponents to attack, and when his opponents are attacking in ways that he doesn't expect, that can cause him issues. And just to really break this down and try to make it clear, this counter-attacking strategy is made worse when his opponents are switching it up than if he was just attacking regularly. And the reason why is because he's moving towards his opponent when he's trying to counter-attack, and when you're moving towards your opponent, their power of anything they land on you is going to be that much greater. So if you're just standing still, and let's say they hit you with a 50 power punch, you'd take 50 damage. If you're moving away from them and they hit you with a 50 power punch, maybe you'd take 30 damage. But if you're moving towards them and they hit you with a 50 power punch, you're probably going to take like 80 damage if we're going to do that math. So the, the damage is going to be magnified when he's moving towards his opponent. And you can see here, Jerkus is able to land this punch pretty cleanly, and Whitaker doesn't even really have any defense because his main defense is to try to slip away from his opponent's strikes and then counter with strikes of his own. So maybe he thought Jerkus was going to throw a kick here and there weren't going to be any punches coming his way, but he just misread this timing. And that's because Drake is with switching stances. Another case here where Whitaker gets hit by a pretty clean jab from Paulo Costa. So, again, as good as Whitaker's reading of his opponents is, it does cause issues when he misreads his opponent's strikes because he doesn't have too good of a guard, usually. Usually he fights with his hands down for the most part. And then and this was a really interesting situation. So Drakus Duplessis knocks out Robert Whitaker in round two of their fight. And at two minutes and 58 seconds on the clock, Drakus throws a jab. And you can see, look at how close it gets to Robert Whitaker. And Whitaker's not even reacting to it. Drakus is in the southpaw stance. I think that Whitaker has a real bad blind spot in his defense when he's fighting against southpaw opponents because he just doesn't react to it at all until the jab is past him then he starts moving his head away then Drakus chases him down oh this is round one oh yeah here it is so that was two minutes 58 on the clock when he throws the jab this is 2 minutes 56, so this is 2 seconds later. He throws the exact same strike. This time he has a bit of a better angle on Whitaker. And the what makes this different is that that last time Whitaker was just standing still. This time Whitaker's attacking. So it's the exact same thing that we saw against Drakus earlier. But Whitaker's trying to go forward, just walks into the jab and gets wobbled. And then from there Drakus finishes in pretty easily. Nothing too remarkable in the finishing sequence, but still, this jab was really interesting. How Whitaker just didn't see it coming, didn't even really move his head on this position. I think there's an argument you can make that Whitaker was still a little bit dazed from the ground and pound that we saw in round one, and some of the other big punches that Drick has hit him with, such as this, the definitely wobbled him. You can see his knees starting to go out a little bit there. And yeah, then he drops. So great job from Drickus switching his stances up. 
and then here we just have a crazy spinning kick from Paulo Costa. Maybe this is an argument that Whitaker's chin isn't like too bad because he did eat this spinning kick, and he got wobbled a little bit, but had his had enough wits about him to not eat any other big punches from Paulo Costa. So let's just tie up a few, a few loose ends here. Uh, Robert Whitaker actually has pretty good grappling. He was able to get Drakus Duplessis down. He was able to get Israel Adesanya down. Both of those guys have decent grappling in their own rights. I think that Whitaker can use his wrestling against Alaskarov. I'm not confident saying he's going to out-wrestle Alaskarov, but I think that what he can do is just dip in for a single leg on him, similar to what he did against Paul Costa, where if Costa's ever getting a little too wild, Robert Whitaker can kind of just change the pace of the fight dip in underneath the punch, get a single leg, and then even if he's just going to throw a punch like what he does here, just switch it up. And let's just recap. So Robert Whitaker has wrestling. He has shown a susceptibility to getting his face jabbed off and getting damaged by the jabs. But these jabs we haven't seen Alaskarov throw. As good as Alaskarov's jabs are, they are very rudimentary in the fact that he doesn't switch stances. He doesn't try to be super tricky with them. They're his main weapon. So when we see Robert Whitaker face guys who have main weapons, such as Marvin Vittori, such as Paulo Costa, and he is able to get a read on them, we see Robert Whitaker thrive in those situations. Where Robert Whitaker also has very good leg kicks. We see him kicking Paulo Costa's legs out from underneath him. We see him kicking Adesanya's legs. We see him kicking Trickus Duplessis' legs. And we know that Ikram Alaskarov is susceptible to getting leg kicked. So we know that Robert Whitaker's best weapons, such as his jab and his counter jabbing, is going to be effective against Alaskarov. We know that Alaskarov's has weaknesses to... Robert Whitaker's strengths, such as the jabbing and the leg kicking. And ultimately, that's going to lead me to predict Robert Whitaker is going to win this fight. And I'd say maybe via stoppage or decision. I don't know how great of cardio or chin Alaskarov has. I know he's been knocked out by Amsa Chimaev. I wouldn't be surprised if Robert Whitaker wobbles him and is able to finish him in like the third or the fourth round. I think that it's either going to be a decision or Robert Whitaker TKOing Alaskarov. And just one more thing. So Alaskarov does have knockout power. I mean, we've seen him knock out Orly Alves. We've seen him knock out Phil Hawes. And he's a pretty good finisher too. So he drops Orly Alves with a jab, which is concerning because Whitaker's been hit by that jab before. And he just knocked out cold Phil Hawes, and then he was able to chase down the finish against Worley Alves. That being said, being able to finish a guy like Robert Whitaker requires not only knockout power and the skill to land the knockout shot, but also clear-headedness to actually be able to hunt for the finish, and you do need good technique when you're chasing down an opponent as fleet of foot as Robert Whitaker. I think that even if Phil Hawes drops Whitaker, Whitaker is going to be able to adjust to that so he doesn't get dropped the same way the later in the fight it goes. And I don't think that he's actually going to be able to finish Robert Whitaker. We saw Izzy drop Whitaker and Izzy wasn't able to finish Whitaker. Izzy, you can say that Izzy does like to play with his food, but still, if he's confident he's able to finish him, he'll go for it. Jerkis Duplessis was able to finish Whitaker with it, but he had a pretty good onslaught with a multitude of weapons, and I don't think that just throwing a flying knee and then trying to wail on Whitaker is going to actually be enough to put him down. Jerkis was hunting him down intelligently, landing clean shots on him as he was going on it. So, yeah, um, I would be, I would actually be surprised if Alice Garov is able to knock out Robert Whitaker. 
And let's just take a look at the odds. So I'd be predicting Robert Whitaker. I'll say a third round knockout for Whitaker. If we take a look at my bookie, we have Whitaker at minus 157. Wow. I thought Whitaker would be rated at about minus 200. Um, I think this is going to be kind of a, a, a cleanup for Whitaker here. Anyway, I'm excited to watch. Thanks for checking out the breakdown, guys. We're doing pretty well so far. I think I'm at a, about a 70% success rate in my picks. So let me know what your picks are down below. Let me know what you thought of my breakdown. Did you think that I miss anything? What would you have included? And everyone, enjoy the fights.